everybody, I'm Kristen. And I'm Rachel. And this is So I'm Watching the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Season 5, Episode 9, Four Minutes. We did it. We pulled it out of the nosedive. This was a fantastic episode of television. Yep. This was such a good episode of television. This was such a ep good episode of this show. Everything that happened, even the stuff that frustrated me, was so well done and well thought out. And it all made perfect sense. And I... We will get there because I do kind of want to go through it as well as we can. But the very actual ending was perfect. Yep. Ah! The way it should have been done. And yeah. everything that happened in this episode, like you said, uh -huh. all, of, all of the tough parts, it made it worth it. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that my whole experience with this season yeah. was worth it in the end. But I, I, this... I'm glad that we left on this note. Me too, because now whenever I go back and or if like people are like, should I watch The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? I'll be like, yes, yeah. but just so you know, season four and five are like a little bit of a slog. So keep that in mind. But it ends really well. I'll always be able to say it ends really well, yep. which is not always the case. It's never going it, to, it did not leave me wanting at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. It it was a very satisfying ending. It didn't feel it didn't feel servicey in yeah. a way. It just, it just was like the the natural like exhale, yeah, of of the season. So, so we didn't actually get though a button put on why Midge was running out of the office last week. I think it's because of Susie. Oh, just Susie called and yeah. was like, "Hey, X Y Z." I think she was okay. her one phone call. Oh, jail. Yeah, we did correct. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, I, when they, they do, like, multiple timelines in each episode. I was confused. I get and a then, little dicey. Yeah, and then, because the whole time I was like, was she wearing that outfit last episode? I okay. was confused. In the Chinese food restaurant scene at the end, I was thinking the same thing. And I was like, is that the out, the dress that Midge was wearing at the end of season four? I don't mm -hmm. remember. So, regardless, we start in 1965. Yes. And Lenny Bruce is bombing. At, like, a pretty small club. I mean, just washed up at this point. Super washed up. He, he appears to be drunk or high or, like, a mixture. Um, and Susie is in the audience. And she, like, meets him up after the show and is like, hey, I can help you. I'm managing all these people. She's managing Eartha Kitt Ugh. and Phyllis Diller. Killing it. Hell yes. And so she's like, I can help you get this back on track. Like, you just, we, we can do it. Yeah. And he's like he's just like no like not in like a mean way but he's just like i think he is also like he knows. i'm washed up and yeah. like i don't want to do this i sincerely i don't know how lenny bruce died i know it was drugs and alcohol but i don't know like where and when and so i thought sincerely for a while we were gonna watch him die on stage but i think it was pretty quick after that yeah so he does ask Susie if Midge is there, and he says, or Susie says no, but then she goes out back to the alley, and Midge is there, and um, she basically was like, I'm going to LA in a little while. If he's there, I will reach out to him again. Mm -hmm. I assume he died somewhere in between. Probably. Yeah. And Let's just find out. Yeah, and I'm sure that it was Midge's intention to try to get him clean and that's why she was trying to get yeah. him under Susie's wing. Yeah. So actually he died in 66. I thought it was 65. Okay. But he died in Hollywood in 1966. So So yeah, there was that and then we go back to 1961, which mm -hmm. is when everything else is taking place and um that is when Midge has picked up Susie from jail. And yes, that is the outfit she was wearing. Okay. <laughs> I was it's like It's all coming back. It's all coming back to me now. So they go uh to a diner and they're talking about it and Susie admits to having asked Hetty and then also she kind of just like trauma dumps all of her Hetty stuff on Midge who is like super supportive and like e Susie for 1961 hell yeah well she already like she know she took her to a gay bar on Christopher she, Street she knew <laughs> she she already knew that Susie was a lesbian yeah and so it's like not a big deal and she even makes a comment that Susie takes wrong immediately like oh yeah what could she be doing with me and Midge was like no I totally understand what she saw in you like because Susie is great Susie she's is great. prickly but she's great and yep. she's funny and she's smart and she's great so uh they end up getting through all that and she's just basically is like i did ask her so we'll see what happens with gordon and then in doing so i loved that it was just a plot contrivance but i did love how it kept paying off is that like 
she got spilled, her coffee got spilled on her, and so she had to go home and change. So when she gets back to the writer's room, um, they're like, you changed. Did you just go shopping? And she was like, no. And she's getting all huffy with them about everything, and it turns out that Mike was trying to call Mm -hmm. because she's going to be on the Gordon Ford show tonight. Uh, which is very exciting. She's very excited. And then she immediately is like, I need to go home and change. And they're like, what the hell? So she ends up changing like five times. Four. One, four times. two, three, four times. Four times. Mm-hmm. Within the uh, main part of the episode. So the like actual real meat of this episode, I don't know what Rose is planning for. Is it just her matchmaking thing? The seating May- chart on the floor? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why either. Yeah. But she's making a huge seating chart on the floor. And so basically, they're, the meat of the episode is her trying to get everyone to come and see her be on the Gordon Ford show. Because she's very excited. Everyone's very excited. And Abe is so excited. It was <laughs> he so, took his, note, his own note. It was so nice. Yeah. And he so nice. was like, the fact that he went home and when Rose was like, well, I'm not going because she didn't invite me. Yeah. And he was just like, what? And he was yeah. like, we're not doing you, this. You absolutely have to go. And then it turns out Rose what, did leave the phone off the hook. And everyone, everyone's everyone been trying to call. And Midge had everybody trying to call her. Midge had Joel and Zelda and um, uh, the Maisels. Mm-hmm. And all of the writers at work trying to call Rose to invite her to come and see her. And so... Then she's, like, really touched. Then she's very touched. Yeah. It's very sweet. And they have, like, a whole thing where they're trying to get a cab, and all the cabs are doing a shift change. I mean, that's, like, a very... Is that a thing? I mean, in any service industry, there is shift change, but when everyone's all going... Once? But, see, that's the thing. When everyone's going off, everyone's yeah. coming on, so it kind of, like, goes like this. Okay. So... I don't know why all of those cabs right there, everyone yeah. is getting off. Also, I know, or I'm, I'm pretty sure that New York cab drivers, at least at, at one point, were unionized. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm sort of like, don't you kind of, can't you, can't you just like, I'll take this one fare if you're going back the direction I'm going to like turn my car That's in? That's the whole like, thing of a gypsy cab. You yeah. don't turn the fare thing on and you just accept the $20 yeah. and the tutoring offer that Abe was sure. doing. So Regardless, it was silly, but they ended up getting a bus and they made it there. And so um, the Weissmans are there and Shirley is there, but Moish and Shirley both fell in the shower and fell back in love <laughs> while they were staying, like laying there injured. And so he's on pain pills and he had to stay home. So he is not there. Um, But then also Joel and Archie are there and Imogene finally (sighs) showed up, which I was glad about. Was that the only appearance of her this season? I think, yes. Wild. We heard her voice the one time. That is true. But that's it. Wild. Yeah. So it was very nice. And so then basically we come to find out partway through that Gordon is being a humongous bitch. And is having her on as, like, a, and he keeps calling her the lady writer, and I wanted to, like, throw my shoe at the TV. Yep. So he's having her on just to, like, interview her as a writer. And as a, as a human, human interest, interest story. story. And so Susie obviously is, like, belligerent with Mike, which she should be, and he's like, I don't know what to tell you, but he goes to bat up with Gordon, too, and is like, what are you doing? And because seemingly Gordon made this decision without telling anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the plan was was yeah. to have Midge on as talent, yeah. and then he was just like, "Nope." Because Mike was like, when Susie was like confronting him, he he said, "Yeah, she's on the board. I don't know what else to tell you." And so that's when he went to talk to Gordon, and and Gordon, it's just so bad. Stupid. So he's a big baby about it. And then Midge gets a bigger laugh than he does. And he immediately cuts to commercial when he's not supposed to. Which, I mean, it sets up the whole thing. It does. Obviously, I was but... so mad and stressed. <laughs> and so I had seen like a clip where, uh, by accident, before this, before we watched this episode, I had seen a clip. And so I knew she was wearing that dress and everything. And I told you because she was freaking out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, she does comedy. And you were like, I know. And I was like, no, like, on the Gordon Ford show, in this episode, she's gonna do comedy. It's okay. Um, So she basically ends up, during the commercial break, she ends up going to Susie and being like, I am about to do something, and it could ruin both of us, like, in a real way. What do you think I should do? And Susie is like, tits up. Mm -hmm. And so when they get back from commercial, 
uh, Midge just basically is like, I'm not really a writer. I'm a comedian and I was, I'm supposed to do this. So why don't I get to it? And Gordon physically tries to stop her for a second. Uh And from off camera, Mike is like, like, what are you doing? So she goes and she does a set. She does like a tight four and it's pretty good. It's very good. Yeah. I I mean, I liked it quite a lot. Yeah. I mean, for, for a stream of consciousness, you know, on the fly, yeah. but also an inspirational message, especially like about women in the 60s and yeah. independence and stuff like that. Um, but it was just really clean, really mm. funny, and it, it slayed everybody. It was amazing. I mean, and against his better judgment, Gordon Ford was tickled pink. He was tickled pink. He was laughing a lot. He really liked it. The whole bit about like not remembering her kids' names mm-hmm. and then like finally getting there at the end was like really good for me. And then also, they did a really cool. Um, like camera and lighting thing where like as it's like because you get there first and it's got the really pretty curtain from the show which is like really fun 60s like pinks and purples and stuff I really liked and then it like starts spinning around her like it kind of always does when she does this and the lights go down like she's in an actual like club and the laughter gets louder Mm -hmm. and it spins all the way and by the time it comes back to front face her it's the studio lights and the curtain again I mean it was Beautiful. Well, and then I don't know if you picked up on this as well, but it sounded like the clinking of glasses uh-huh. and tableware too, yep. and was just a really, really neat. Kind it was of mash. very cool. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, so she absolutely kills it, and Gordon invites her to the couch after, which is like a huge deal. Mm-hmm. I think that was like the a Johnny Carson thing, right? Yeah, he would like invite you to the couch after. So, I mean, a huge deal. She's very excited. Um, she did talk about Joel in the act, but mm-hmm. he was... He, he told her he to. He was like, talk about me. Like, do whatever you have to do. Like, I swear it's fine. And then even after, he he and Archie were like, just to everybody, like, that's my ex-wife. That's my best friend's ex-wife. <laughs> so excited. Um, and so were the Weissmans. They were like, mm-hmm. that's my daughter. They were very excited. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was super great. And then we get a couple more peeks into the future. Um, or one peek into the past first. Oh, yeah. We go back six months to the night after Midge, uh, slept with Lenny Bruce and they go out for Chinese food and, um, he's trying to get her to sign her signature less legibly. He's trying to teach her how to be famous. Mm -hmm. It's adorable. He gives her, he opens her fortune cookie for her and like pretends it's like a really lovely mess, a really lovely like fortune with a a really cute message from him um and we had seen her stick that fortune in her dress before she went on stage earlier in the day which was also very cute and yeah i don't know i just really i'm so glad they got another scene together me too in this show because uh rachel brosnahan and luke kirby have such good chemistry they really do it's woof it's so good. So that was like the night that she walked home and almost lost her toe. Which, although, uh, so did he take her back to the theater after Chinese food? No, I think they went their separate ways after Chinese food. Because she okay. said that she was going to go home and he was like, well, you're never going to get a cab. Yeah. And so she decides to walk. Yeah, then the end of season four was slightly misleading because it seemed like she left from their altercation at the theater and immediately started walking home, if I'm remembering correctly. But we didn't rewatch it. Mm-mm. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Regardless, it was really... <gasps> they slept together after the raid. That's what it was. They It was the raid and it started snowing. Okay. Um. So they ran and then they went back to his place because okay. they were soaking wet because of the snow. Right. And then they slept together and then I think they went and got Chinese, Chinese food, food and then she walked home. Okay. And that was all post the theater. Yes. Okay. All right. That's not important, but I couldn't make sense of the timeline in my head. Yeah. <laughs> um and so then we jump forward all the way to 2005. Mm-hmm. Um and Susie is in a palatial estate. Well, so is Midge. (laughs) Yeah. Midge is in a honking penthouse. But I think it's so funny that she she has her little TV room. Yeah. And it's the size of a shoebox. And she has all of her little cutouts. Uh And it's just, it it is very much like an old, old rich lady thing to do. Like you have this sprawling penthouse assuming apartment yeah but the room that you only live in is like so it's tiny. like because the rest of it's just for show yeah okay that's something because sh- i love I, I you know you love it and you admire the hustle but there is something very very sad about her meeting with her team 
and her looking at her calendar and saying what's on tuesday because it's empty and her team is like there's nothing for tuesday you can rest and she's like put something on tuesday and it just does sort of feel like she's just fully or, or filling her time because there's nothing else to fill it with mm -hmm. And so I, I just was like, it's nice because she is so successful and she has all these trappings that she always had and always wanted and wanted more of. But when she walks from the kitchen where she's eating alone while the kitchen staff just like work around her and then she walks back down her palatial penthouse past the like 40 seat dining room mm -hmm. that's all laid out with China that no one is sitting at and eating with her and then all the way back to, like you said, her tiny little TV room where she gets on the phone with Susie and they watch the last night's Jeopardy that they both taped and they, like, sync it up together. It's very sweet. It's also a little heartbreaking mm -hmm. because she did get this big life that she wanted. But what does that look like, actually, once you yeah. get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she still has her, like, wedding picture from Joel mm -hmm. prominently displayed in her office. I mean, it's so beautiful and very romantic and so sweet but it it you just kind of are left with a i mean it's nice but like you're all but alone at, but at what cost yeah yeah oh so why are she and Susie not like living it up together <laughs> who knows <laughs> who knows but it's just i don't know and i i feel like Susie's home see while it is large there are people like everything feels a little bit more weirdly lived in cozy yeah where but and I, and I wonder if that's kind of like midget situation is like the jewish aspect of it because her family mm -hmm. obviously are holocaust survivors oh could be and so it was like no you get the big you get the big yeah. because we came from nothing our family had nothing and so once you have everything i think it's a little a little bit of that but i also think it's a little bit of just how midge was raised where it's like ever you need the proper True. things yeah. in the proper place and Susie grew up with nothing so she's like I just want to be comfortable mm -hmm. but Midge is like I need these outward trappings to show that I am successful yeah. and Susie's like I just want to I, I want a cat and a fuck like, ton of birds I just want to lay in yeah. my bird room yeah so yeah and we literally end the show with them just cackling to each other on the phone mm -hmm. and if that ain't it yep Ah, uh, so good. I was very pleased with this finale. Mm -hmm, me too. Super very pleased with yeah, it. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I mean, yes, like, you have your family and you have your partners, but what is life without your girlfriends? I just love that she wasn't, like, I mean, presumably Joel is dead, but I just <laughs> love that she wasn't, like, calling Joel or, like, Joel wasn't, like, in the house with her and, like, you know. Or insisting herself upon her children. Yeah. And, exactly. I mean, because, I mean, yes, if you have the relationship with your children that you love like absolutely but like if the boundaries have been set i yeah. mean why why wallow in it so it's just like lean out lean on my on my girlfriend yeah and i just think it was great that it's like that's the relationship that started this show yeah. and that's the relationship that ends the show i think it's fantastic i really and maybe it was because my stakes were like a little low going into this because i was like mm, like yeah it, we're we're gonna be finished it's whatever but I just was like, it kind of blew me away how good it was. Me too. If I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. So I am super happy. I have decided that we are going to expeditiously start covering <laughs> Gilmore Girls with this one here. So be on the lookout for that coming soon-ish. We've got a busy weekend coming up, but we'll probably start recording soon. So, all right. Well. That is it for us. Thank and you. And that is it for yeah, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And for Maisel. We will also be back for um, Amy and Daniel Sherman Palladino's uh, next show whenever that ends up happening. Yeah. Depending on the strike, it is about ballet, I think I said. Mm -hmm. and Luke, like warring like ballet companies, yeah, I think. Yeah, and Luke Kirby is in it, so you can be sure that we will tune in. Um, but yeah. Thank you for being with us. Sorry that we didn't like it all the time. Yeah, sorry I was is. super negative. We all know I like, I try, <laughs> I, I like to like things, yeah. but you know, you, you are here to hear opinions. Yep. So I gave mine, but. And once again, I'll just let you know that if you don't like what we're doing. <laughs> you don't have to watch, my friend. Stop. You really don't. Stop watching. We don't mean anything to you. Yeah. Um. And you don't have to tell us, which is such a weird internet thing. Yep, so I don't know. Yep. But despite all of my feelings about this season and about last season, yeah. like I said in the very top, 
I feel great about how things ended. I wanted to send us out with a final red lip and some vintage jewelry. I don't have any vintage jewelry. On, That's but... all right. But I just felt because I think I started the season in the same in the same situation, and so actually, oh, no, not quite. My earrings are not yet vintage. They're oh. they're almost twenty five years old. Oh, we'll see. Not yet. Right there. Yeah, we're right there. <laughs> But yeah, no, so we super appreciate you um, for sticking it out with us, and we'll see you soon, and we like you so much, and you can say your part about where to find us on other things. Uh, at So I'm Watching, or at So I'm Watching the Show is our handle everywhere. We have a website, soimwatching.com, if you're interested. We have a Patreon, if you would like to help us keep the lights on, patreon.com slash watching the show. And we also have a Cash App and a Venmo if you don't want to sign up for a monthly thing. So we'll take tips. Tips. Yep. We w- <laughs> we'll work for tips. Yeah. So tips yeah. up. T- tips up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.